Hi everybody, welcome to the next part. So now we learn how to make the basic the game, but what we couldn't uh, finish last time is that when the ball, uh, when we hit the goal, we want to return the ball to the previous position, which is the start position. Now there are multiple ways of doing that, and the way I'm going to implement it is that I'm going to create an empty game object, and I'm going to call it ball spawn point. And I'm gonna go to ball my ball position here, copy component, paste the component. The rotation actually should be the scale should be set to 111. And now uh, I'm gonna go to my script here. So I want to access that uh, ball spawn position. So I'm gonna do transfer ball spawn position. So let's assign it. Ball. So I drag it to here and open up our script. So now all I have to do is that I say other that game object that transfer that position. So this would be the transfer of the ball. And now I'm gonna set it to the spawn point. So I'm gonna do ball spawn to a position that transfer. Actually, that uh, sorry. So ball spawn spawn position dot position. And now, if I press play, so I click on start game. It's gonna open up, and I'm gonna grab this, throw it. And but you see, there's a problem here because my ball has some previous movement. As soon as I bring the ball back to its original position, it keeps moving. So how can I stop it from moving? And this has to do with the rigid body because our ball uh, movement is based on rigid body. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna actually. I need to access the ball game object multiple times. So I'm gonna need to do this a couple of times. So instead of doing it each time, I'm gonna create a game object. This is also called caching. So I'm gonna cache my game object inside the variable so I can access it. Ball equals to other game object. So now I can do ball dot transform the position. And now uh, we want to stop the rigid body force. So I do ball dot uh, get component rigid body dot uh, velocity, and I'm gonna set it to vector three dot zero. So we set the velocity to zero, and now I need to do ball get component rigid body again. And I'm going to set the angular velocity to zero as well. Yeah, so now let's test this. So if I click on play. I click on start, it opens up, I grab the ball, throw it, and you see it now it doesn't move anymore, it's gonna stay in the same position because we are disabling the previous rigid body force. And if I try to, oh, so close. <laughs> and we can actually, let's try to score the user position as well. So what I can do is that I can, let's say, duplicate this one, increase the size of it, okay,
I want to make a, another canvas, but this canvas is a bit different because it's not going to be intractable. It's just going to show the user score. So I'm going to rename this to score board. And actually, if I just find my canvas, it's here. So I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to call it scoreboard canvas. But I don't want this to be intractable, so I'm going to disable this. <clears throat> And now I'm going to move it here. So instead of the button, uh, I'm going to remove this. I'm going to add a UI text, which is very large. So make it smaller. I'm going to change the color to white so it's more visible. So I'm going to call it score. Let's say by default it should be zero. So a score. Okay, this seems fine. Let's just make it a little bit bigger. So here, in my UI manager, I'm going to access that text. So I'm going to first we need to import Unity UI. So I'm going to do using Unity uh, engine.ui. I'm going to ask, make a variable for my text. So I'm going to do text. Dot, uh, so name it score text. So I can drag it here. And now I make a method. So I do public void increase score. And I'm gonna actually here, I'm gonna create a private int. Let's call it score. And by default, I want to set zero. And I'm going to say score text dot text because we want to change the text element equals to uh, score plus i plus score. And before we do that, we want to increase the score value. So I'm going to do score plus plus. And now each time the user scores, I want to call this method. So I'm going to go to my goal check. And what I need to do is that I need to access my UI manager. So I'm going to do UI manager. And here do UI manager dot uh, increase score. So I call the method I created and now all I have to do is that I go to uh, my goal check and assign the UI manager. So now if I play the game I should see my score increasing. So I can see the scoreboard so I click on start game 
I grab it, I throw it, and you see it's increasing. So, two, three. And you can make this a lot more challenging. For example, you can move the platform that is there or move it further away. So to make it more challenging for the user, because now it's not that hard. And another problem is, as you can see now, we set it, if it, if it hit the goal, it should return, but we didn't define any condition if the ball goes outside of the our platform. And that's something you can work on uh, yourself. It's the, basically the same logic that we applied here. You can use it to bring the ball back if it hits the ground. And one last change that I'm going to make is that uh, here, the layer, it says to UI, which is correct, it is UI, but the problem is when is something is set to UI, it's going to show the raycast, but this is not an intractable UI. So I'm going to set this just to, to default. It's not going to change anything, but it's not going to show our UI, UI interact there raycast anymore because we don't want to see them and now it's still showing them is because of the debugger so if i remove that it's not going to show them anymore so if i click on start it's working and the ball is going to move very slowly <laughs> yeah So this is how you can make like using these three elements like physics, uh, physics, animation and audio, we made like a simple game and you can make a lot of improvement to it. So we can make it more challenging, improve the graphics, there's a lot to do. So that's something you can work on on your own time. Thanks for watching.